We spent the last year chopping, sawing, tearing, grinding out every inch, every bulkhead, every single piece of our boat. And now that we're down to a completely bare hull, it's finally time to start putting things back in. To turn what was built as a coastal cruiser 50 years ago into the strongest offshore sailboat she will ever be. So this week, we're starting the glasswork. But since inside is a loud, noisy mess right now, we're going to be outside building a sample to show you the process and what's going on inside in more detail. Time to see what's inside. And when we're done, we're going to be doing something we would never do with our boat. <laughs> Okay, so now that everything is ground out of the hull and uh, everything's ready to have the glassware start going back in, let's talk about how we're planning to reinforce the hull so that we have a good structure and a good foundation to build off of. This is some PVC foam, about 10 centimeters by five. And this is gonna make up the ribs that we're gonna laminate onto the hull. It's very flexible and soft but it's also really easy to work with. So we can just hot glue this directly to the hull and then shape it and sand it with some 80 grit. And it's, it's very, very easy to work with. Uh, but this is just the formwork that the glass is gonna go over top of. Then each one of these ribs is gonna get three layers of glass and then the whole hull is gonna get two more layers of glass. So that's what we were marking up earlier with the Sharpie is sort of where those ribs are gonna go. And then this bigger 10 by 10 centimeter foam is gonna go around just underneath countertop height. And it's gonna go all the way around the whole boat we had originally thought about sort of angling it back a little bit um, to match the deck. Uh, it's, we've seen it done in some of, some of the newer boats, but because we're doing the floor and we're reinforcing where the cabin sole is gonna go in with foam as well, splitting the difference between the two seems to make the most sense, especially because we're gonna be splitting up the ribs as well. And all of the cabinetry and plywood that we're putting in is also gonna be glassed in. So, we're sort of building two redundant systems and they're both gonna complement each other to make a really strong hull that's still relatively flexible so nothing cracks and breaks. That's the plan. But even the, even the 10 by 10 is uh, relatively flexible. So when it curves up against the hull, it's gonna create like a really nice piece of structure. It's also probably gonna make a good surface to mount all of our conduit on going around the boat as well. So all the electrics will be pretty high up and out of the water line. So that's what's happening next. Now that it's stopped raining and the interior is dry, we can start gluing all this formwork in. It's really cool how empty she is though. It's kind of spooky. We're excited to put some structure back in because <laughs> it's uh, a little wobbly. All right, well, while they are in the boat glassing in the ribs today, we're going to be out here building a bit of a section model so that we can better explain what's happening inside the boat without being in the way of the glass work. So over the weekend, then and I built our little replica. It's pretty accurate when it comes to the thickness of what the boat hull would actually be like. But uh, now we're going to be gluing in the ribs and glassing them in and we'll explain everything that's happening in this process. Pretty solid. Nice. Uh, this is our hull that we glassed together over the weekend. It's about a centimeter thick. We're not really gonna know until we cut it open if it's actually a centimeter. It feels like, feels like maybe about a centimeter, maybe 0 0.8, half an inch-ish. It's pretty um, solid though. Super solid. Nice. But this is just to represent the thickness of our hull. It's not actually meant to be as strong as our hull, although it's probably stronger than our hull. Once we took out all the bulkheads and stuff inside, this, 
50 mil by 100 mil piece of foam is what's become the ribs, which is stiffening up the hull. Uh, so we're gonna hot glue that down to our hull and then sand it a bit and then glass it the same way that they're gonna glass it inside. And then once that is glassed down, we're gonna take this 100 by 100 mil, which is more the stringer, cut a notch out and glass that one, which is representational of the stringer that goes along horizontally through the boat. The idea behind doing them overlapping this way is we're doing layers of uni, so like unilateral fibers, so they're not like biaxial or woven roving, so they're super strong in one direction, but those are gonna go down along the front edge of the rib, and then when we put the stringer over top of it, it's gonna go along the inside edge of the stringer. Um, if we did it the other way around and glued that down first, then we'd have to cut that uni for the rib, and then it kind of defeats its main characteristic, which is to be, be unified, super right? strong in like this yes. bending direction. Yeah, yeah it needs uni, to be uni unified. Exactly. Oh. Probably gonna be like. Piece kind of like that. And this piece is gonna go on top of it. Nice. Okay. Glue time. Oh, yeah. I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna ask what type of foam this is. But the reality is, is that it doesn't really matter because it's only the formwork that the fiberglass is going over top of. So it's only meant to like hold the fiberglass off the hull to create that form because it's the shape of the glass in the end that's the structure, not the foam. Uh, so you can kind of use any foam. This is whatever they happen to get at a different yard. It is flexible and relatively easy to work with. Um, but you could just use pink foam board from like a hardware store if you wanted to. So there's a lot of controversy around if you start with the smaller pieces and work your way big, or if you start with big and work your way small. At the end of the day, I don't really think it matters. Um, we're gonna start small. We're gonna do two layers of the biaxial first, and then put the two layers of uni on top of that, and then put the largest layer of biaxial over top of the whole thing. Um, and that way it's just gonna be a nice, super strong sandwich. And it would be much faster and easier if we were using a roller. I don't have one. You could just wet out the fiberglass pieces like on a board, like they are inside. It's faster and then you just pick up a whole wet piece and lay it on, but they have more space to work inside. And they've got two people working and they've got foam rollers, which makes the whole process faster. So first small layer. So this is um, 650, so it's biaxial, stitched biaxial on the top with like a thin layer of chop strand on the bottom. Since we're using vinyl ester, works great because the solvent in the vinyl ester molds the chop strand mat really, really nicely. Right, second layer. So it's right. two layer of the same thing. Two layers of biax of the same biaxial first, and then two layers of uni go on top of that. So why two layers and not just one? Because it's twice as thick, so it's twice as strong. And then the uni is what gives it like a lot of strength, but only in that like one bending direction. And the biaxial gives it strength in every other direction. 
This is a um, uni, unidirectional fiberglass. And so all the strands are laying in the same direction. And then there's a little bit of weaving stitching just to kind of hold them together. And so unlike the biaxle that's going on a crisscross and it's all stitched together, this is thick and strong, but only in one direction. So the best way to do this is to lay it, not just lay it on the top like that so it's thin, but if you lay it off to the side just a little bit and then you let it drop down the side, it overlaps. And then the second piece, we're gonna do the same on the other side. And that way it creates sort of like a C channel. Now we put some peel ply on it. This helps keep the glass and let it kick the resin and it also creates like a nice unified texture and it also absorbs like any of the uh, excess resin on the top. All sorts of good reasons to use it. So now that we've glassed in our rib, uh, we're gonna let it cure, cause that's what they're doing inside. And then we'll come back and install our horizontal stringer later. Ooh, it's already warm. and check this out. The boat is progressing. <laughs> we're finally not demoing anymore and we're finally starting to put back things and build things. boom has got like a full rack of ribs. Makes me hungry. Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Uh, she's noticeably stiffer already. And they brought the ribs all the way up to like the hull deck joint and glassed them. Um, to the deck as well, which is really good. And then once the horizontal stringer goes in, they're gonna do two more layers of glass over top of everything. And that's gonna come up like a full foot onto the deck as well. So she's gonna be super, super strong by the time we're done. She's already much stronger than she's ever been. Yeah. And you know, she's empty <laughs> still. Yeah. So. She's only gonna get stronger from she's here. She's only gonna get stronger from here. That's yeah. Right. And then we still have to sort of figure out what we're gonna be doing in the like build section. Um, come, come, come with me. Oh, it's early in the morning. Um, so the height of the actual finished floor when we're done is like this line out here which gives us the exact same amount of headroom that we had in Uma before, which was a good amount of headroom. I think it was six foot four, 1.9 something meters. The floor is gonna be about here. And what we wanna do is build like a flat section for the floor like panels, like the bilge access panels to go down. So we're probably gonna build some sort of like wall of foam here and then taper it back so that this all gets glassed down into the bilge and then when we put our floor panels in it'll be flush with that so we can put our flooring on top of it. Uh, that's going to be the only tricky part. It's definitely one of those parts where like us as the designers went full this is what we want it to look like and uh, are leaving it up to the contractors to figure out how to do it. <laughs> um, but we'll be in here today and tomorrow helping with that as well. Yesterday they took out the main bulkhead, which is pretty cool. We cut into the ceiling and grind it all out. This is where the bulkhead 
went up and there was no glass or glue or Cicoflex or anything connecting the bulkhead to the cabin top, which means it was just a squeaky mess every time we went sailing. And the new one's gonna be significantly stronger. So I'm pretty sure they're gonna be putting that one in today. They kept the old one out to template. But first we need to uh, measure and mark where the new bulkhead is going. So we arrived at the yard early this morning before the guys show up so we can get the laser level back out and measure and mark where the new main bulkhead is gonna be because that's kind of the reference point that everything else is gonna get measured from. So we need to make sure it's perfect. And the guys are here, so we need to get a move on. Wrap this up. Yeah. Let's see how she did. I think this is like the best and most fun part of peel ply. It's like the real reason you use it. It's just so sad. So, this is the rib. It's been glassed in. Peel ply comes off, and now we're going to glue in and fair in the stringer, and then glass it in as well. Uh, three layers of before, small, medium, two layers of this. So the trick is that like the first layer, we're gonna cut like here, and then the second layer we're gonna cut like maybe on an angle, mm -hmm. and the third layer we're gonna cut like, you know, here or something. So they, so there's not like the same seam. It's gonna like, they're gonna overlap in different ways each time. Okay. So we should maybe do that now so that we don't have to do it when it's wet. That's a good idea. So because we're using a uh, vinyl ester resin inside the boat, this is also a vinyl ester based uh, filler and we use the same catalyst to harden it. Um, we don't need much, but it's just enough to put a little bit of a fillet in the corner so that the glass has something to curve around. So even that's probably too much. All right, first layer is coming in. And while we're continuing to do this on our end, the guys are inside continuing this in the boat. All right. Now we just now we let, that bacon let it sit. See you tomorrow. reasons that we made this full-scale mock-up was to sort of demonstrate what's going on inside and the decisions that went into it but also so that we could cut it open and actually see just how much glass we just built out and see where the structure is the difference between our model and the boat is 
we can cut this one open and not feel bad. Sweet. That worked out exactly as I was hoping it would. And now you can see like all the layers of glass that we put in there and how they all go over each other and work together as a matrix. It's a lot thicker than I was expecting it to be actually. It's gonna be so strong. <laughs> so this, this one coming down here is the rib and that's the one that got glassed on first. And so you can kind of see that it goes up and underneath the stringer. But that way the, the uni fibers that run the whole length of the front of like the inside edge of the rib aren't broken. And then the uni fibers that run the whole horizontal section of the stringer also aren't broken. If it was done the other way around, there'd be a separation here um, on the rib, which would cause like a, a weaker point. That's why we did the ribs first and the stringer second. And you can see like the layers going up and around. And that actually, do you want to pass through the tape measure? It looks like almost exactly a centimeter. We were hoping for between 0.9 and 1.2 um, centimeters thick for our little hull model. Uh, and that's, oh, that's thicker. It's 1.4. So that's thicker than our actual hull by a little bit. Um, and that's also representational of like the thickest part of the hull down by the keel. It obviously gets thinner the further up it goes. And by the time we get all the way up to the like hull deck joint, our hull's probably 0.5, maybe 0.6, it's quite thin. This entire hull section is also gonna get two more layers of 650 biaxial on it. And then it's gonna kind of fill in this corner a little bit more. So we've got a two mil brand new hull built on the inside of our old hull. And then these ribs and the stringer are just gonna stiffen up the entire boat significantly. It's insanely overkill for a cruising boat, but uh, where we're going, we're gonna need it. Are you ready to go see what it looks like inside? Yeah, maybe this will make more sense now uh, with the model. You can see what's inside the model and then you can see what they're doing inside and uh, hopefully it'll all make a little bit more sense of why we did what we did and where we did what we did. I like it. It's solid. The ribs are glassed in. The stringers are glassed in. The floor is not quite glassed in yet, but they've started on it. They just need to glass it in now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty it's cool. It's all coming together. It's nice to see something come from like a model and get put into the real world. It's like the thing that makes me the most happy in the world. Well, second thing that makes me most happy. Because <laughs> I'm the first. But, yeah. um, get safe though. Yeah. <laughs> It's really cool to like see it all coming together. Oops. They also like we need to unplug this now. Anyway, yeah. look, light. Oh sh! I forgot how bright it is. <laughs> yeah, now you can see. Look, yeah. now you can see the repairs and the and the ribs and stuff. It's um, it's going smoothly. It's going it quickly. Is. It looks really good. It's super strong. It was like so, so much stiffer. Like before, when everything was out, just like a little wobble like this, and the whole boat was like all shaky, shaky. But. Yeah, with the ribs going up and glassed into the into like the deck, um, it's just so much different. And this is basically all the structure that we really need. So bulk, like the two main bulkheads are going to go back in, and then after that, everything else we're adding is mostly just furniture and cosmetic, because um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all of the ribs and stringers and this floor stringer are going to be at like the actual structure the boat needs. Yeah. So. So we did get a few questions on Patreon while we updated you guys on this project, and so we're gonna go run through these questions really quick so that you get the answers for them too. Uh, so a few, a few things is one, why are the ribs offset? Because they're not equally spaced throughout the whole hull of the boat. Yes. Because we're trying to go back and forth between the structural elements and the design that we have for the boat, um, we confirm with the engineer and the boat builder that's helping us with this whole project that it doesn't really affect the structural integrity. 
to have them a little bit off. So yeah, it's all yeah. like the difference is like on an airplane or something like that. You've got like the skin and then you've got the, the structure and the skin isn't structure and the structure isn't the skin but when you combine them they make like a composite right it's the same way that sort of new boats are built where like the outside skin of like one or two millimeters of fiberglass isn't strong enough to hold anything and the inside one millimeter of fiberglass isn't strong enough to hold anything but when you combine that with the you know centimeter or two centimeters of foam it creates like a composite structure that's super rigid right our hull is a centimeter thick. It's already structural, as it's proven for the last 50 years. It's already strong enough to hold up. So the ribs that we're adding to the inside are gonna help stiffen it up, and they're gonna help make it stronger without making it too like brittle. And so the, the ribs where we place them in the hull are gonna line up with the bulkheads we're putting into the hull so that we don't have like a mismatch in like a bulkhead and then a rib, which creates like a third like point. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're coming down into the original build repair that we did and those floors are evenly spaced and so we're adding like this come, come down here <laughs> <laughs> we're adding this uh wedge we're calling it a floor stringer i don't really know if that's the correct term or not but this sort of wedge shape here is going to also help translate all of these loads it's going to act kind of like a spar and so it's going to translate all of these loads from the ribs down into the structure that we built in the build already uh, and this corner here is going to have some uni put on it as well, so it's going to kind of act like a beam. And so it's going to distribute the loads between the two. Yeah. And then it's going to angle up, and there's going to be like a nice smooth angle here that's going to be glassed, and that's going to help distribute some of the... Because this bilge repair that we did back at the beginning is really stiff, because it's like super strong. But since we only had access to a limited amount of space, there's sort of like a hard joint where our repair stopped and the original hull continued. And so this wedge is kind of bridging that gap, and so it's going to be glassed over, and then we're going to taper the glass up the hull, so it's going to create a much more um, feathered distribution of load. That sounds very complicated. I think the correct term for this would be a spar. Spar. Because that's kind of what that does, is it takes like a bunch of little loads and distributes them along, along. maybe that's what it's called. We're not engineers, uh, which is why we've got, we've got the guys at four relatively large well-known shipyards helping us. So we're just texting them on WhatsApp. Is this a good idea? Is this a good idea? What about this? Plus the guys that are actually doing all this glass work um, build like super yachts here in Olvia. So we're, we're, we're in good hands. We're not just like making this shit up. No, um, we've been planning this for, for a long time. For a long time. And now it's just a matter of like, yeah, communicating with the engineer and the people that know way more technical stuff than us. Yeah. Um, to know more about exactly how this is going to go and how we can relate it to the design and stuff. So the ribs are now glassed in and they've got the same, you know, two layers of biaxle, two layers of uni, and then another layer of biaxle that goes all the way from here to here. The stringer is done the same way, so that's super strong. And then everything in the entire boat is going to get two more layers of biaxle put onto it. So we're basically building like a brand new hull inside of our old hull. Um, and that two mil of biaxle is about the same thickness that they're using on the interiors of like new boats with a foam core. And so our whole entire one centimeter thick fiberglass hull, original hull is basically acting like the core. Like the mold. <laughs> like the, yeah, that's just like the <laughs> mold that we're gonna take with us. So yeah. so for all of you guys who asked like, oh, why are you not getting a new boat? We, we, we are. are. We are getting we're just boat. using our old wood as a mold. Yeah. for the new boat that we're building inside of our old boat with the same size and same shape and yeah. same everything <laughs> only with less with less fiberglass and building an actual new boat yep so it's pretty sweet it's pretty sweet and now that the ribs and stringers are done and glassed into our hull we were curious to know just how strong this thing really is let's see if we can destroy this thing Already? It's not as good as I was expecting it to be, to be honest. It just snapped. Well, that's interesting. So don't take a hammer to a sailboat, maybe? Is that the takeaway? 
I wasn't expecting it to delaminate like that, though, honestly. I'm hoping that's like an R f up and not like a materiality f up. Yeah, but... Because I'm hoping that like all this work that we're doing and we bump into a dock once and it just delaminates like huge sections of our boat. That wouldn't, that would, that wouldn't be very good. They did the exact same process that we did. Like we did the hull, then we waited. The hull was dry, we represents the same hull we have. And then we laminated the foam and that's exactly how they did it too. They didn't re, re, re sand or re like cleaned up each section before. Yeah, they took a peel ply off and glassed right over it, which is theoretically what it's for. Like you shouldn't have to wipe it down with acetone or grind it or anything once you cover it with peel ply. And, and I don't want to over exaggerate things as we're doing all this work, but it kind of makes me worried now about this project. Yeah, I was expecting that bond to be like a lot better. <sighs> is everybody right? Are we like, are we crazy to think that this was worth it? Yeah, we do have another piece. A so, corner. so like that's our hull, and then and then th this is a dock. Yeah. That's oh, the part shit. that bugs me. <laughs> 